welcome back. So now that we've created our GitHub account, we're going to work on creating our first repository. So this is where the good core components come in and we start using GitHub and all of the features that come with it. So we're going to be creating our first repository in this video. So what you want to do is one of the ways of creating a repository is going to your homepage. Then you're going to go to repositories and then new repository. This is going to take you to the repository creation wizard. So first up here, you're going to put your the name of the repo. So I'm going to put my uh, repo just as a little trial. And then under the description, you're just going to put a well short summary of what your software project or application is about. So I'm going to say a test repository for learning GitHub. There we go. So now you can choose private or public. Now, unfortunately, you cannot choose private unless you have the paid plan, but I'm just going to go with public for now. You can still choose who can commit to the project, but for now, we're just going to keep it on public. Now, if you have the paid version and you want to use private, by all means, go ahead. Now, for now, we're going to be initializing this repository with a readme. So we're going to, you know, work with all of that. Uh, but in the future, when we start working with remote git commands, we can't, we are actually going to create empty repositories. So we can't really do all this readme and all of this stuff like this. But for now, we're going to keep it on. So now you can choose to add a git ignore. Now these are template git ignores. So uh, you can choose from the template here if you're using something specific. Uh, for now, we're just going to leave the git ignore off. And then you can add a license. So you can read about licenses. Um, all over the place. Uh, there, there's many different licenses for different things. For now, I'm just going to choose MIT license because this is the license that allows people to freely distribute it um, and copy it however they want. So it doesn't really uh, matter which license we choose for now since we're not putting anything on here. But if you're putting some software for a business or a company, then you're probably going to want to use some other license that uh, prevents people from copying and distributing your work. So let's go ahead and create this repository. So there we go. This is what a repository looks like. There's a bunch of things here that we can see. First of all is the number of total commits. Then we have the number of branches, the number of releases, contributors, and the license. So right here you can see the file structure. If there is more files, you'd see a bunch of different files. In the readme, you uh, the readme will show, well, pretty much the readme. So in there, you can put, you know, maybe something like a summary about your repository or project, all sorts of things like that. We're not going to get into writing a readme now. You can do that in your own time since this is a test repository. But let's go over some of the other things we can see here. There's a bunch of tabs. So we're going to talk about these features when we view other people's repositories. We'll do that later in the course, but let's view some of these right here. So issues. So issues can be labeled by contributors. Um, anyone who's listening on your project, working on it, can actually find an issue and list it. And what you can do, or what PU and other contributors can do, is go and look through and find these issues and try and fix them. So it's a really useful feature on GitHub. And that's what I was saying, It's GitHub is all about socializing with other developers and uh, you know just bringing everyone together as a community. So now we have pull requests. So I was talking a lot about the push-pull cycle, but pull requests are basically anyone who is requesting access to pull your project onto their local machine. So that, that's pretty much what a pull request is. Now you have projects here. So this is just um, a little thing. Let's read it here. Do you know you can manage projects in the same place you keep your code? We don't really need to go through all of this because this is just a bunch of workflow management uh, so we're not going to use this for now. On the wiki, you can actually, uh, is a bigger place to lay out something like a summary. So pretty much we have the readme, which is just a short kind of uh, quick and concise place to list your project. But on the wiki, you can list maybe a documentation. So this would be a great place to put a documentation of some of one of your maybe applications, libraries, things like that. You would put it in the wiki. So insights allows you to see a lot of different uh, features about your 
um, about your repository. So pretty much just like Google Analytics or any other analytics program. So right here you can see uh, merged pull requests, proposed pull requests. Uh, there's a bunch of different uh, metrics here. We're not going to go through them. You can look at some of your uh, contributions for different for different contributors. There's a bunch of stuff here that you can go through uh, in your own time. We don't need really need to look at analytics for now, uh, but just go through, read everything. It's pretty short introductions. Uh, don't worry about this. So let's move on to settings. There we go. So in settings, we can change some of the things about our our repository. So if you want, you can delete your repository from there, but I wouldn't recommend deleting repositories at all. That's a very, very dangerous move. Uh, so try and, unless you are absolutely sure you want to delete it, um, don't, don't go through and try and delete repositories. So there you go. You can change the name here if you want. I wouldn't recommend that though. So once you have a name and once it's established and you're being using it all over the place, uh, try not to change it that much. So you have features here, you have wikis, so this is just a bunch of uh, enabling different things and allowing people to do things. So like I said, you have your collaborators, you can invite collaborators from here. Uh, so, you know, maybe invite your team, whoever you're working with. You have your branches and you can switch between the default branch and other branches. Webhooks allows you to interact, uh, inter integrate GitHub into your web application. Uh, so, for example, when a pull request happens, it, it does something on a web application. So that's pretty much what it is. You can read about that in your own time, but I'm not going to go through it now. So integrations and services, you can see it's being deprecated. So we're not really going to go through that, but this just uh, works. It basically works the same as webhooks in a way, and it just has a bunch of different things that you can integrate into your applications. You have your deploy keys. We are not going to be using these. And like I said... Uh, deploy keys in the beginning, I said I was talking about other uh, other programs and other software that has integration with Git and GitHub, so like Heroku. So Heroku would need a GitHub key to actually deploy something onto their uh, server. So that's what de deploy keys are used for. Then we have interaction limits. So this is just um, changing the sort of access that users and contributors can have. So you can enable these if you want. I'm just going to leave them all off. And that's pretty much it. We have gone through all of the different things in our repository. So we have a few things here, but like I said, we're going to leave a lot of these interactive features for interacting with other repositories. So we're going to leave it for that and just go through, interact with your repository, look at some of the features I skipped over maybe uh, if you're interested in them. I, I don't think it's necessary for the course or for... For the most part, it's not really necessary, but if you're really interested in it, go ahead, take a look at it. It really shouldn't take that long to learn. So yeah, that's pretty much it for our repository. In the next few videos, we're going to be working towards uh, working with all of our actual features and everything like that. So we're going to work through messing with other people's repositories, mostly test repositories from GitHub. We, we're going to do all sorts of stuff and really interact with repositories and get the most out of GitHub. All right, let's move on.